That's a pretty clumsily worded assessment statement. Let me get off the pier. These barrels are all identical. If I was to heat one up, and the temperature would rise, obviously. If I give it twice as much energy, the, the temperature rise would be twice as much. Three times as much energy, and the temperature rise would be three times as much. And four times as much energy, well, you can work that out yourself. So the amount of energy you give something will have something to do with the temperature rise. If you double the energy, you know, double the temperature rise, assuming everything else is the same. There are other factors, in fact, two more factors to consider. Here I have three blocks of gold. Let me just turn on the heaters. So this first block is gonna get really very hot indeed. But this block here is only gonna get an eighth as hot. And this other one, well that's 27 blocks, so that's only gonna get as 27th as hot as the first block at the beginning. So not only does the amount of energy affect the temperature rise, also the amount of what you're heating affects the temperature rise. The specific heat capacity is also important, SHC. So for aluminium, it's 0.9. And so that means that 0.9 joules will raise one gram of aluminium by one Kelvin. We have some other blocks here, copper, 0.4 joules will raise a gram of that by a Kelvin, silver, and Atkinsonium. Now that has a very, very low specific heat capacity. Let me heat them all up, give them the same amount of energy. The mass is the same of these things. The only thing that's different is the material. Aluminium is going to heat up the least and Atkinsonium is going to heat up the most. For every thousandth of a joule, a gram of it's going to get a Kelvin hotter. Wow, he's heating up there, bless him. Oh, I seem to have opened a rift in space and time. Uh-oh, he doesn't look that happy about it. Whee! So Atkinsonium has the uh, lowest specific heat capacity, so it's going to get the hottest of the metals, assuming that you're having the same mass and the same energy for each one. And off he disappears, never to be seen again. Goodbye, Dr. Atkinson. Oh, oh, he's back. He's back as a zombie. Wow. What does that sign say? Let me check it. Uh, that explains it. Maybe if I beat him with the sign. No, it didn't work. Curse you at Kinsonium for your low specific heat capacity becoming the hottest. So specific heat capacity. Let's start off with uh, an example. The specific heat capacity of water is about four joules per gram per Kelvin. That's one sig fig. So what does that mean? Well, just read the units and that will help you. It means that four joules of energy raises one gram of water by one Kelvin. So even though that unit looks evil, it's actually quite doable, isn't it? Let's look at a few questions. So how many joules of energy will raise one, one gram of water by two Kelvin? Well, that's eight joules, isn't it? That's not so bad. If I've got 40 joules of energy, how much water is going to get hotter by one Kelvin? Think about it. Yeah, 10 grams. And finally, 16 joules of energy. If that raises 2 grams of water, well, how much? By 2 Kelvin. Now, there is an equation that will help you do that if you can't do it in your head, which is delta H equals MC delta T. Now, we call it MCAT here. MCAT. The IB says that delta H in this case is Q, which is the energy change. But we prefer delta H. M is mass, C is specific heat capacity, and delta T is the temperature change. Now don't fall for the little trick that we might do for you here. This is all of what is being heated, not what is doing the heating, not of the fuel, it's of what's actually being heated. So here's a question with a few tricks. Let's write out the equation. Delta H is MCAT. 
So the mass is 0.1. Well, no, hold on, that's in kilograms, and specific heat capacity is in grams. So I'm, I'm going to convert my kilograms to grams. Specific heat capacity, 4.18 for water. And it's in degree C. So should I convert to Kelvin? Well, you could convert to Kelvin, but it's going to give you the same answer, whether you bother to or not, which is 5. Multiply those together, and the sig figs and... I don't care about those. How do I know it's joules? Well, I'm going to cancel the units. The grams goes with the per gram. The per Kelvin goes with the Kelvin, leaving me with joules left behind. There are several ways that we're going to try and catch her out. Here's how. That's the same thing, isn't it? Well, not really. 4.18 and 4.18, that's the same. But keep an eye on the units. If you're in joules, make sure you're in grams. If you're in kilojoules, make sure you're in kilograms. Don't get confused with those units. How else are we going to mess you up? We could give you degree C, but you know what, that's the same thing. Degree C and Kelvin, because it's the difference in temperature. So it's going to be the same number. Your results are bad, well that's a lack of insulation, you were heating up the container, heating up the air, blah blah blah, that's why it didn't work. And the minus sign. So maybe you're going to need it. Don't forget a minus if you need it. So if we're asking you for delta H of combustion, that's exothermic, so it's going to be the negative sign, like negative 10 joules or something. Much more interestingly is spontaneous human combustion, SHC, which is what comes up on Google. That's where some guy just catches fire. Let's see if we can spot who it is. Dr. Atkinson and his brothers look very happy here. No sign of spontaneous human combustion. Uh-oh, that guy, he's going to blow. So I suppose if it's spontaneous human combustion, delta G is negative. I'm going to hide in the water. So he won't uh, burn me. You have to know two reactions that have a delta H that's negative. Combustion and neutralization. Wow, that's quite a thing. Is he going to go into the water? Ah, uh, no, yep, no, yep. Oh, he's out. No, he's not. Eyes in the water. Extinguished and safe. You lucky man. Oh, no. He must have had some potassium in his pocket. 